Hi everyone. I just bought my new Surface Studio um, yesterday after doing lots and lots of research online in search of a device that will give me the flexibility and the capability to, de to deliver and produce perfect videos um, for my students. Um, we actually are living in a digital, sorry, <laughs> digital age um, in which things, the culture is rapidly changing. Um, everything is changing so at a very tremendous speed and so much is really competing for our students' time. And as teachers, for us to win in this battle, we need to rethink how we teach. Uh, kids are born in technology and they are growing in technology. Therefore, it is only essential and vital that we look for important or crispy or easy ways to seamlessly integrate technology in our, <laughs> in our classroom. In my past 15 years of teaching, um, what I've noticed is in the last five, in the last, actually in the last eight, nine years that I have actively um, incorporated technology in my classroom. What I've noticed in my personal experience is one, the interactions between the students really has gone through the roof. And right now I teach less and I really mentor more. I spend more time talking with my students, helping them to navigate the roller coaster of life uh, more than teaching. And the overall effect is that students really have a learning at a tremendous rate. And, and one thing too that, that technology in my classroom really has helped me is the feedback rate that I give to students. Students are now able to get instantaneous feedback to their problems rather than waiting for me um, to grade their papers and return them maybe a week later. Now they can just get immediate feedback to their problems. And more so, um, my teaching is very much differentiated. The fact that I, I pre-produce my lectures even before my students meet me the first day means that means that I am in class more or less as a facilitator of their learning. I'm walking through the journey with them, teaching them more, not the content, but how to learn, how to think. Because the fundamental philosophy of my teaching is I teach for understanding. I don't teach for students to memorize. When students walk into my classroom, I present them the challenge of learning. But then, the way I produce and I, and I, and I provide, and I, the, I, I reorganize the environment in such a way that students can actually learn and understand and demonstrate that they have actually understood what they are learning. And when I say that I teach for understanding, I mean that I ensure that students leave my classroom being able to think with what they have learned and being able to apply what they have learned. So today I'm going to actually um, set up my new computer and uh, hopefully later on tonight I'm going to do a couple of videos and just experiment with it. I'm really excited about this new computer. So let's get it rolling. Um, so what do we have here? All right. I have to peel this off. Jeez, it's kind of hard. Um, I love to teach, to be honest with you. Um, and I like to teach things that are challenging. And that's why I choose to teach physics. It's a beautiful subject. Physics is all about the universe, it's all about learning about the principles that govern everything that happens in the universe. Essentially, in physics, 
we are trying to understand how and why things work the way they work and it's a beautiful subject um, and that's why I really am passionate about helping my students to understand the subject matter so let's see what we've got here um, this is actually a 28 inch computer and basically the reason I bought this computer is simply because um, of the screen I can actually write on the screen and it's it's a 20 inch 28 inch screen which means I have plenty of room to solve any problem that I want to solve um, and be able to use you know slick softwares like Camtasia Studio to be able to capture my screen and this will this will actually give me plenty of room to do whatever I want to do so let's see uh, and and the screen really is is neat you don't have to stress to to to, to elevate the screen just with a, with a touch of a finger it could really go down and with a touch of a finger it can really go up and, and thus they call it the zero gravity screen which is a physics term anyway so let's let's move on with this I cannot stand because um, the way the camera is set up oh my it's a beautiful screen So what next? Um, thing I have here the keyboard. The stylus. mouse so I, I have to pull this thing out to activate it and and the good thing about it is that Microsoft built this machine in such a way that the mouse is already connected um, to the machine I think this is going to the trash can now um, <clears throat> so all I have to do Let's look for the cable. Where, where did I keep it? Okay, there you go. So this is the power cord. Power cord is really nice. Um, it's well. I like it. Um, it looks really beautiful. Um, and it resembles the power cord from my Mac. But so the next. What you need to what you notice is let me let me go this way. Yeah, better. Um, the power cord actually goes at the back. Ooh, awesome! Now <clears throat> it has a couple of USB ports. This is, I think, uh, the SD cards. Um, and you have the network cable right here. Um, I've heard a lot of people complain about what's actually inside this little box. It's more like a laptop, but really I don't care. Um, as long as it does what it says, it does. And I think it's really a beautiful and a powerful machine. You could, as you can see, it could clearly go down and easily come up. And this actually gives me plenty of room, as you can see, it's very flexible. It gives me, you know, plenty of room to be able to draw and write whatever I want to do on the screen. Initially, I had used a Wacom tablet, it was small. And by the way, I couldn't see anything that I was writing on the tablet, so I had to look on the screen. If you watch my previous videos, you will see me staring at the screen and writing and not looking at what I'm writing. Um, and that was really annoying. 
um, to be honest with you. Uh, that's why I kind of upgraded to. I bought this, um, but it's a it's a nice machine. Um, I'm still I use this in my classroom quite a lot. It's very portable, but still the screen is small. What not? Even though I love the laptop, it's it's a beautiful laptop. The problem I've actually encountered with the Surface Book is the fact that there is a latency. There's a it lags behind when I when I write, and it actually gets heated um, in the course of use. But overall, it performs really well, and I, I give kudos to Microsoft for actually doing this. Um, so I'm really excited about this new machine. So let me turn it on. Let's see. What happens? Alright. Okay, so where is the power button? Oh, there you go. I think the power button was just at the side. Sorry. Coming in at the moment, so let's wait and see. I'm connecting to the internet right now. So let's wait and see. Use Express settings. Let me see. I'm going to customize. Next. 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 Ta-da! It's coming on. Getting critical updates. Um, it may take a little while, so I may have to go and come back. That was fast. I think the updates are done. Finally, the screen is all set. So let's see. Let me set up, connect my surface pane.
Let me try and see how it will work out. That's beautiful. See, I can actually put my hand on the screen while I write. And it feels more like you're writing actually on the paper. And that's what I love about this machine it, it provides me a lot of space to do whatever I want to do um, and yet it's there is no lack of time between me writing and actually seeing what I'm writing as what occurred uh, when I was using my software's book um, I'm actually using one note right now to write this is beautiful beautiful Hello everybody, in this lesson we will talk about stationary points. Remember, differentiation tells us how the slope of a graph changes. For example, if we have a function which is equal to x squared plus 4, then f prime of x is just gonna be equal to 2x plus 0 which is 2x then f prime of a 2 is gonna be 2 multiplied by 2 which is equal to 4 so the question is what does this 4 mean it simply implies that the slope or gradient of f of x at x equal to 2 is 4. In other words, differentiation of basic functions at a particular point gives us the slope of that function at, a, at that particular point. Um, <clears throat> if we look at a function like this, just x plus 4 so these are just some typical example um, you will see some problems in physics that you will need this particular trick in, in simplifying the problem so this comes to the end of logarithms if you have any questions please do not hesitate to contact me now uh, how why why is the question remains in my why is logarithm so important in physics? Logarithm is very important, especially in the labs. Sometimes you will be investigating, or most of the times you will be investigating nonlinear relationships. For example, let's say you have a ball, and that ball is allowed to fall to the ground from a certain height. The relationship between that height and time is given by 1 half gt squared. If you draw this graph, it's going to be a curve. But there are ways that you can actually use to linearize this function to make it easy on you. <clears throat> 